the Z fighters have gotten used to life after the Saiyan invasion. Of course, some of the group dying was a hard thing to handle, but at least they got to come back to life pretty much instantly. Tien had a lot of hatred towards Raditz ever since he first came to Earth and attacked him, but after Raditz tried his hardest to fight off the other two Saiyans and try to save his life, Tien looks at him a lot differently now and thinks that the two will actually be able to become friends. Raditz is still pretty mad at his brother that they let Vegeta go since he knows that he'll be back eventually, so they need to continue to train harder than ever before to make sure that Vegeta doesn't get the better of them. Thankfully, they're able to get their tails back thanks to Taranbo, so they'll be able to utilize the power of the Great Ape if he ever comes back. Monaito tells the group that they were all at a gigantic loss and woefully unprepared for what the Saiyans could do. If it wasn't for him using the Dragon Balls to help, then they all would have died, so they're gonna need some extra special training. He, of course, is talking about King Kai in the other world. If they can all make it through Snake Way, then they could train under him and gain incredible powers, just in case Vegeta ever comes back. Goku is excited for this, as he's always open to getting stronger. After Manaito is able to pull a few strings, the Z Fighters are all accepted to go off and train under King Kai. The Z Fighters all journey down Snake Way, and due to everybody's speed increase after the battle with the Saiyans, they're able to make it down and to King Kai's planet in only a few weeks. Once there, the crew meets with King Kai, who tells them all that they have great potential, so he's willing to train them all as long as they can tell him a good joke. Krillin, Shoutsu, and Raditz are all able to tell him a pretty good one, but for Goku and Tien, it's a little more challenging. They're all able to begin their training though, and luckily for them, this time, they don't really have much of a time limit since the Saiyans have already come and gone. Of course, they don't want to wait around here the whole time since they don't know when Vegeta will come back, but at least they're not rushing to get through training this time. The group are all able to be with King Kai until around the time of the Frieza Saga and Canon, meaning they've been here for quite a few months. In that time, the group have managed to access the Kaioken and use it to their fullest potential. Goku is able to use a pretty high multiplier, with Raditz exceeding his due to his higher power level. Let's say Goku can push his to times 10, while Raditz can push his to times 15. Tien is able to get it around times 8, with Krillin around times 5, and Shoutsu at the lowest can get it to times 4. The Kaioken isn't all the group learned though, as King Kai has also been able to show them the Spirit Bomb. Unfortunately, not all of them are powerful enough to use it to its fullest potential, with only Goku and Raditz being able to. The others can use a smaller version of it without hurting themselves, but thankfully, still enough to have it be useful. Things have gone pretty well up on King Kai's planet, until he notices that there are invaders coming to Earth. The group asks him what he means, with him beginning to freak out that some of Frieza's men have arrived on Earth. Raditz, concerned, asks him who it is, with King Kai revealing the Ginyu Force. It's Raditz's turn to freak out now, as if the Ginyu Force have made it onto Earth, then that means Frieza knows where they are, and they're definitely gonna die. Goku tells him to calm down, since they've been preparing for something like this for if Vegeta ever came back. After all this training with King Kai, they should be able to take them. Raditz tells him he doesn't get it, since the Ginyu Force is Frieza's most powerful squad, especially Captain Ginyu, who they're not going to be able to take by themselves. Goku tells him they have to try, so through King Kai, they contact Manaito to have him wish them back to Earth. Once back on the planet, the Z Fighters rush in to meet with the Ginyu Force. Once they arrive, the Ginyus begin to laugh seeing Raditz there. They say that it's hilarious how this Saiyan went off to hide on Earth with his brother. He's a disappointment to his whole race for betraying Vegeta and Nappa, and even worse, Lord Frieza. They're here to wipe him and his brother out for the good of the Empire. Once his brother is threatened, Raditz decides, screw it, and yells out, Kaioken. Raditz explodes in a red fiery aura, his power boosted 
15 times, as he clocks Ginyu right across the face, sending him into a nearby mountain. The other Ginyus are shocked at how fast Raditz has become, as Ginyu fires a double Sunday right at Guldo to kill him instantly. Thankfully, Raditz knows most of the Ginyu's abilities, so made sure to wipe out Guldo before he could freeze them all in place. Goku and the others burst into their Kaiokens as well, and rush the rest of the team. Krillin takes on Jace, throwing a Destructo Disc right at him to slice him in half. Jace fires his Crusher Ball to deflect the attack, with it being sliced right through. Jace is able to dodge the disc right in time, as Krillin slams him into the ground. Tien takes on Birder, with the fastest being in the universe attempting to dodge out of his way. Thankfully, with Tien's Kaioken on his side, he's able to catch up to Birder a lot faster than he anticipated. The two begin their battle, with Birder still being the more powerful of the two, though Tien has some more tricks up his sleeve. He's able to blind Birder with his Solar Flare, and with the power of his Kaioken, amplify his Tri-Beam to be even more powerful, with it becoming a Neo Tri-Beam. The Neo Tri-Beam is launched right at the blinded Birder, erasing him from existence. The blast does weaken him though, causing him to fall out of his Kaioken and needing Shoutsu to protect him. Goku is able to pretty much one-shot Raccoon, who is of no power to him at all, and then turn to see Krillin having some trouble with Jace. He rushes in to help, and with Goku and Krillin fighting together, Jace is knocked out in no time flat. With most of the members either dead or knocked out, Goku is pretty disappointed, since Raditz said they were tough. He looks on to see Raditz battling it out with Captain Ginyu, who is clearly on the back foot with the increase of the Kaioken. Raditz is surprised himself, as his brother was right. With all the training on King Kai's planet, he's gotten more powerful than he ever expected. He can actually win this. Ginyu is infuriated that the weakling Raditz is besting him. How could he have gotten this strong on this backwater planet? It's ridiculous. He never wanted to use this technique on Raditz of all people, but if he wants to survive, then he has no choice. Ginyu goes to throw a powerful punch at Raditz, with the Saiyan about to dodge out of the way. But to his surprise, Ginyu punches himself right in the chest, damaging him greatly. Raditz is shocked, wondering what the hell this guy is doing. Ginyu then unleashes his change attack right at Raditz, with the two swapping bodies. Raditz is overcome with pain by the new hole in his chest, and is shocked to see how he's now in Ginyu's body? It can't be! Ginyu smiles as he blasts Raditz away. Ginyu then walks over to the others, with Goku wondering why Raditz is looking at him funny, and why his energy feels very different. Ginyu then punches Goku right in the face, saying to take down a Saiyan, he's got to become a Saiyan himself. The two begin to fight, with Goku still not understanding what's going on, but knows that this can't be his brother. Raditz slowly tries to crawl over to the others, trying to tell them that it's not him, they swap bodies. Krillin helps him up, saying he believes him, as why else would he just turn on them so suddenly? Thankfully, the healer Namekian has been nearby to watch the battle, and after being assured that this is just Raditz, he is healed back up and says he's gonna try to go get his body back. While Goku and Ginyu are fighting, Ginyu begins to realize how outclassed he is. He's confused, since from the scouters it showed that Raditz was stronger than this one. So how is he not able to access all of that power? Raditz comes back in to help, telling Ginyu that cheating your way to power means you have no power at all, and that's why he's not able to utilize his power whatsoever. Ginyu is getting annoyed now, saying that's impossible, he's the captain of the Ginyu Force, strongest of the Freezer Empire, and he won't be defeated by these pitiful Saiyans. He blasts Raditz away once again and launches into Goku, ready to change bodies with him as well. Raditz tries to stop him, but he doesn't know how to control this body either and won't be able to stop him in time. Goku is about to be hit by the attack, but disappears. Ginyu is confused on where the Saiyan went. He was right in front of him. Does he know how to teleport? He is suddenly hit in the back of the head and sent flying into the dirt. He is raised up instantly and shoved right into Raditz's face. Kami demands that he puts Raditz back in his body right now. Ginyu is confused on where this Namekian came from and why he can't get out of his grip. He says that if he wants that so bad, then so be it. Ginyu unleashes a mouth beam to destroy Raditz, but Kami covers his mouth once he senses it, 
taking the entire attack on his hand and suffering no injury. Ginyu is shocked as he is then beaten down by Kami. The others watch as this Namekian blitzes Ginyu like he's tissue paper. They've never seen this guy before. Has he always been here? The healer Namekian says this isn't one of their tribes, so he has no idea who it is either. Kami slams Ginyu into the dirt as Ginyu screams out, change. Instead of hitting Kami though, the beam hits Raditz, who Kami blitzed over right in time. The two get their bodies back, with Raditz in a lot of pain after his body was beaten so badly. Kami grabs Ginyu by the neck, making him unable to speak, and squeezes so hard, his head pops off. The others are shocked at the brutality of this Namekian, since they're normally not that violent. Once he lands on the battlefield, the others ask him who he is and where he came from. Kami tells them that he is the nameless Namekian, who has forgotten his true name. He is from the planet Serial, and has been its protector for many years. He has come to this planet with the help of his friend, since he wanted to find his sons. Goku and Raditz are confused, as Kami introduces them to his friend, Bardock. Bardock lands down next to his sons, saying, it's been a long time. And with that, we end this part here. Hope you guys enjoyed the battle with the Ginyus and the return of Kami and Bardock of all people. How did they get here and how is Bardock still alive? Well, make sure to check out the next part to find out. If this video gets 500 likes, then I'll be sure to continue this series. So make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see the next part. With that, I'd like to give a shout out to all of my amazing patrons. As in the official patron tier, we have Nathan, BBB, and Bossmaker. In the moving up in the world tier, we have Patrick Sandlin, John Lister, David Monroe, Sinshenron 92, Oak Woodtree, Ogadashiba, Monal, Eric Doss, Blake Foyer, Matthew Garcia, Vegito Gaming 72, True Lightning Striker, Joseph Kelvin Liu, Semroth, and Speedster 352. In the VIP patron tier, we have Always Zero and 11726. And finally, in the God tier, we have Tony Kage. Thank you, especially Tony Kage, you're an absolute god. And thank you all so much for watching and supporting this series. It really means a lot. So, until we meet again, you guys, see you later.